You know, your story begins in Congo, goes down to South Africa, and ends up in Los Angeles. And my story really began in LA, went down to South Africa, and ended up in Congo. Um, and, and like we've been traveling the country together in this RV, and, and it's really interesting traveling the country with somebody like Eve, right? I mean, you're like driving for hours and hours and hours, and it's like, oh, I'm starving. <laughs> Are you? <laughs> you know, things will happen, and it's like, oh, this is the worst thing ever. <laughs> you know, just like this daily dose of perspective constantly at you. Um, you know, I, my, my story really begins with, with a film called Invisible Children. Have you guys seen Invisible Children, heard of Invisible Children? I, I mean, you know, originally Invisible Children was just a documentary about uh, some buddies of mine had gone to North Uganda, they made a film, they brought it back, and they're showing it to us, and, and we have the reaction that I think probably most of you guys have if you've seen it, or if you've seen something like that, it's just that feeling of like, we gotta do something. You know, that feeling that you have when it just like comes from your gut, it's like, yeah, like, we gotta, do something, and it's like, yeah, <laughs> let's totally do something, and it's like, but what something, like, I don't know, but something, something, like, what something, like, I don't know, but something, something, and somebody's got the idea, they're like, let's do a protest, and it's like, yeah, <laughs> let's do a protest, and, 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 but it was like, have you ever done a protest, like, I've never heard a protest, like, have you ever done a protest, like, I've never heard a protest, and, and so what was happening at the time in the Uganda was that um, kids were being abducted out of their homes, right? And so about 50,000 kids every single night were leaving their homes. They're going and sleeping in these verandas, these like community centers. They're going and sleeping side by side. And so what I see said is for one night all across the country, let's do the same thing. Let's leave our homes, go and sleep side by side. And for one night all across the country, we're going to close our eyes in order to open up the world. Super simple idea. And so we're putting the word out, we're putting the word out, we're putting the word out. And about a month before the event, there were only 4,000 people signed up, which... There's a lot of people, but for a national, nationwide rally, like that's not going to turn a lot of heads. But this was 2006, and I don't know if you guys remember what happened in 2006, but 2006 is when Facebook came out. And like, you know, there was like the world before Facebook, and then everything changed forever and ever. And, <laughs> and like, you know, I mean, I remember the first time I, I got Facebook, I was with my roommate. We just graduated college, and like, we got Facebook, and, and, and it was like, I remember we looked at it, and it was like, uh, the first thing I thought of was my middle school crush, who I was like obsessed with, and, and who had no idea it even existed. And, and so I was like, put in Nikki Brewer. And he typed in Nikki Brewer, and it was like, ha ha, like, I love Facebook, like, this is amazing. And, and so, you know, we're like putting the word out, putting the word out, and we just got to see 4,000 people just sort of like hit. You know the way that things can only hit in the internet age, and the way they never could have before, and we just got to see those numbers go like this, and, 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 you know, there was the night of the rally, and this is us, it was at the UT Tower, and sitting there, I wonder if we can do that better with the lighting and all. Uh, let me see if this works. Give me just a second. Oh. How do you guys feel about that? Can you do that? You don't fall asleep on me? <laughs> Promise? Okay. So, it's the night of the rally, and I'm sitting there, and I'm, at, you know, with, we've never done anything like this before. It's like my six best friends, we've got our, our like, pickets, and our signs, and our shirts, and our stencils, and the whole thing. And I have this, like, thought. Whole, like nobody could show up, you know. Like we could be sitting out here, like with as complete idiots, uh, and nobody could come. And as I'm thinking about this, one of my best friends just looks at me and he goes, "Oh my god!" Thousands and thousands and thousands of people across the country. Eighty thousand people came. Out. The largest protest for Africa. In America. And I'll never forget it. I mean, we're like all text messaging each other, right, from all over the country. Like, are there people in Philly? And it's like, oh, it's crazy. Like, are there people in Atlanta? Like, so many people. You know, there's just people everywhere. And we wrote letters to our congressman, we wrote letters to our state department, we wrote letters to our president. And, and, you know, for so many of us, it was the first time that we'd ever had the chance for our collective values on display. You know, the things that we all agree about. All people are born free. All people are born equal. It was the first time that we'd ever had the chance to say those things out loud. And, and the result was that a month later, the State Department started referring to the conflict in Northern Uganda as an emergency. First time in 21 years of war, the State Department acknowledged that this war was an emergency. No one organized the event, but it was going to Vast majority of participants, you're in college. We just changed the State Department. You know what I mean? Like, like we have influence. That, and so the big question was like, we could do this, what else could we do? Like, everybody's messing each other. Like, 
Facebook posts, it's everywhere. Like, we can do this, what else can we do? We can do this, what else can we do? And that's all we're thinking about. And so I see decided to do, do it again the next year. Fewer cities, so higher concentration of people. And the result of that was that the State Department appointed $20 million to the peace process and appointed a senior level diplomat. Bringing the war as close to the event in 22 years from now. No one organizing the event was going to play safe. Fast majority of participants, high school and, and And right about that time, a buddy of mine started a company called Tom Shoes. Have you guys heard of Tom's? <laughs> uh, I mean, again, you know, Tom's, uh, you know, I'll show this picture just because it makes me look cool. Um, but, like, you know, uh, Tom's, was this, Tom's was similar, I see, in, in the way that, like, this was an idea born completely out of ignorance, right? Completely out of naivety. Blake had gone down to Argentina, seen kids without shoes, you know. He fell in love with the Argentina Navigata, bought 200 pairs of shoes, brought them back, and started selling them. He said, if we can sell these 200, we'll buy 200 for kids without shoes. That was it. Like, totally ignorant, naive way to like, even begin thinking about these things. And, and again, hit a connected generation and just took off. And in two and a half years, Tom sold 50,000 shoes. And, and then it was like, well, we figured out how to sell shoes, but how do we give away shoes? Like, you know, no one had ever done anything like this before. And so we got the chance to go to South Africa to give away shoes. And, and so I quit my job, packed my bags, and hightailed out to South Africa. Uh, I show this picture because I think, honestly, what this picture says to me is like, cocky little shit. <laughs> like, like, no idea what I'm doing on this continent, why I'm there, like the history, the background, like nothing. Like, just know I want to change the world. Hoorah. Like, what the hell does that even mean, right? But like, that's it. Like, we had 50,000 shoes to give away, so we gave away shoes. We, we gave away shoes, and 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 I mean, you know, look, like, shoes don't solve a problem, right? It's not what you call sustainable development. It's not like water or education. It doesn't solve really anything, but what it does do is it provides this amazing moment of connection between two human beings who would otherwise never have been connected, right? You're sitting on the floor, and you're looking up at somebody's eyes, you're coming up your shoes, and I think that connection is not to be underestimated. Despite popular claims about brands and corporations and governments and money and institutions, connection might just be the currency that makes our world go around. And so from there, I just wanted to get lost. I don't know if any of you have ever had that desire. Somebody mentioned travel who said it. There you go. Uh, I just wanted to get the hell out of Dodge. We use this quote by Herman Melville. He says, it is not down on any map. True places never are. And so that was the idea for me, it was to find true places, true people, hear sounds i never heard before, smell smells i never smelled before, and just go. Spent as many months as I could getting lost. Ran into Hanson, that was weird. <laughs> <laughs> Kept getting lost. Ended up in northern Uganda, where I met this girl named Rosalind. You know, Rosalind was 14, she was born with AIDS inside the conflict in northern Uganda. And I sort of fell into this little volunteering thing, where it's my job to spend two weeks with Rosalind, interview her, and hear her story so that people could share it with Western audiences. And you know, you spend two weeks with anybody, like you just get tight. This is kind of the nature of proximity, right? You hang out with someone for two weeks, you're just gonna get close. And Rosalind's deal is that she loves Spider-Man. She had seen Spider-Man like 60 times. She knew it backwards, forward, upside down. And, and so anytime the interview got too intense, you know, interviews like this get very intense. And she would just look at us and go like, <laughs> and that was her way of throwing spider webs over our mouths and just saying like, chill out for a little bit, let me go be a kid, then we can go back to the interview. Uh, you know, it was the last night after two weeks of hanging out, and we're saying goodbye to one another, it's 8 p.m., it's late at night, and it's pouring down rain, and I'm so thankful for the rain because, you know, we're all bawling fears, and you don't want the Ugandan men to think that you're a sissy. Uh, come on in, guys. And, and she looks me in the eyes, and she says words that I'll never forget. She says, son, our skin is a different color, but our blood is the same. You're my brother, I'm your sister. And it was sort of like, you know, here you have a 14 year old girl who gets what all of our great visionaries have always understood. And so few of us have ever really embraced and made our own. That we are the same. I mean, at a fundamental level, we are exactly the same. And, and like, she's going to die. Right? That's the reality of the situation she's living in. And, and the big question for me is, like an ignorant 26-year-old, why? Like, why is she going to die? And it's for all reasons that we know, right? Lack of sanitation, medicine, technology, access, information, attention. All things that we have in abundance and all things that we have yet to share well. 
I'll never forget this image of Bill Gates. You guys remember five years ago, Bill Gates said, change the world? Uh, which is awesome. I'm not taking away from it at all. But uh, what he did was he called together all the world's experts on all the major problems. War, and health, and the environment, and water. And so he's sitting there, and he's surrounded by gray-haired men and women. And they've got charts and graphs and easels, and they're explaining all the major problems of our world and how to solve them. And, and he's sitting there, and he's got his hand on his head, and he's just looking at all of it, and he goes, it's just a distribution problem. 